What's cracking guys, JP here again, bringing you another update of my 20 gallon reef tank. Now this tank has been 3 weeks now since the move. So far so good, no losses, no problems, no icks and dats. And what contributes that is I try to remove as much stress as I can. So what I mean by that is I try not to change the light intensity, no change that, no changing the war, no just keep it the same. Uh, basically keep the dosing the same I did not feed too much I tried to eliminate the stress or anything that could go wrong because someone said if you think something might go wrong it will go wrong so the only thing that went bad on me is my refugium light the smaller one that was the older one I think it was getting too much moisture because it was covered on a aluminum protective sheet thing and that clip, the, the acrylic clip, it broke on me, but that was an easy fix. But I didn't even know that was going to happen. So, so far, at least they are not the corals or the fish, so that's what I'm happy about. So far, when I move, you know, make sure I got the bucket. I got my styrofoam container, you know, to keep the temperature stable as, as I can. And I got a couple aqua tainer for the salt water when I move. You don't want to change as much as you can because when I move the temperature definitely drop because I don't have any heater in the car or you know for the aquarium sorry but I just use a battery air pump bubbler or air pump you know to keep the fish oxygenated and corals flowing but so far when I moved it took about one hour drive and about two one hour to put all the core, uh, rocks and water and temperature and then another hour to get it all acclimated so definitely a big process now since this is only a 20 gallon it was a very simple process for people that have more than 75 gallon it might need more planning so be prepared just be prepared and do your research all right on to the tank now this tank it's doing very well. I have changed the flow. Uh, back then it was flowing back here to the back, you know. Now it's going to the front around. Now why I have done this is the torch is getting so huge, man. It's so huge that it's like 7 inch by 7 inch. So here's a coke ball right here. This is the 20 ounce coke ball. It's pretty huge. To be honest so it's a huge coral so I did frag these heads because they were in between so, so right here there's a head that's missing so what happens is um, when the head is getting behind it's getting less light it's getting suffocated getting you know no flow so it was dying I have a few heads that was doing that so I fragged it. I did lose a couple heads because it was too late. It just, it just, it just, it was just gone. But the funny thing is, I have a couple corals right here. When I fragged it, I split it. Like I use just, I just use a pliers or you know those cutters, and I split the coral. But I just glued it together. You can still see the white glue right there. But I glued it together, and look, it's back. It's healthy. I think even though you might split the coral, it's still okay as long as it doesn't get any infection or bacterial infection. And keep, you know, st stable parameters or stable environment and that help the coral recover. My gold hammer is up here. It's growing bigger and bigger. I move my green hammer back here. It has grown more heads since over here in that black spot because what's happening was it was getting shaded by this green torch and now since here it's getting more light more head about six heads now growing growing crazy okay in this tank I can grow my LPS I can grow my SPS very quick crazy right but the downside is, I can't grow any softies or zoas. That's funny. 
I just don't know why. In this tank, I can't grow Zoas or Pallies or Softies at all. It's just weird. Even the GSP, it's slowing down. The Mushroom, in the other hand, is doing okay, but they're just Mushrooms. They're, they're easy to keep. But that's just the only downside that I have never told anybody in this tank. Weird, huh? But you know, this is my dream. I always wanted to keep Torch, Hammers. That was my own, my own opinion, my own preference. So, I don't know how that happened. It just, the tank just basically grew what I wanted to be. Now, this tank, I am not, I am not dosing any extra chemicals. No fish oil, no none. Just, just basically calcium, alkalinity, the BRS2 part, and a lot of fish food. That's it. So ever since I moved the tank, I have not changed a single war. I have not done a war change for two months now. Two months. And I feed the fish. A lot and I have a little sunlight with me beside here it's getting this side of the light because uh, I mean this side of the tank indirect sunlight so that uh, the corals you know get some light right here and a lot of people say don't have any indirect sunlight man you're gonna have full of algae guess what I can't even grow any <laughs> but I do have some green patches here and here. Now this is from the dead Monty. That's understandable. But in this side, this is very pretty. It's not hair algae. It's like, it's not dusty too. I, when I put my hand, it's not slimy. It's just, I had this algae in the side of the tank before. But it's very pretty. You can see that it's there's no hair it's not hair so it's not affecting corals it's like coral and algae is like encrusting but it's not i don't think it's consuming anything but here's my coral and algae here's a sponge here's a white sponge and here's the algae and here's my pally or zoas growing on it so that's the only algae spot that i have and i am feeding this tank now in a, when I since since I moved, I have been feeding, increased my feeding for three times now. Before I'm only feeding the tank one once a day. Now I'm free, feeding it three times. I might increase to four times with frozen uh, this week. And I am not even having any algae issues. But you know why? One secret weapon I have. My secret weapon is the Chetomorpha Refugium. Now this is the 15 watt plant light. This is red and blue so it's very pink magenta color. And it's about uh, I would say 3 inch off the wall, you know above the wall. And I have Chetomorpha right here. It's a big ball. I remove it, cut it out, put it in a trash bag every once and a half, one and a half week now. Before, I was only removing about every month. Now, it's about one and a half week. So, that's my evidence that the Chetomorpha is removing so much nutrient and excess nutrients that I am feeding for the fish and the corals. And it is catching up. So, so for people that have algae issues, try a refugium. Go the natural way. You know, natural way is the best like the ocean. Because in the ocean, you just don't see reefs all around. You'll see mangroves, you'll see algae patches everywhere on the rocks. So, go the natural way. And I do have a protein skimmer here. I just upgraded uh, the export, the export tube. This is the bigger. Now, this is just a 3 4 do-it-yourself protein skimmer. This is the tubes that you have in your under gravel back in the day. So very simple, just an air air protein skimmer. And I think it's protein skimming very slowly. I do have a my container back there. But I'm using this uh as basically just an aerator, you know, oxygen and CO2. So yeah. I don't dose any fish oil or chemicals to remove the algae, nothing none of that. I don't even dose any more phytoplankton. I don't dose the Red Sea anymore. 
I don't dose anymore. I just very low maintenance, very simple. My clownfish are happy. Everything is going three years. Uh, the light, the filter, AquaClear 110. My my setup is all the same. My ATO is still the same. Very simple. So yeah. Well, that's basically it for the update, guys. Uh, thanks for all the good lucks and best wishes from the last video for my move. Everything went well. Thank goodness. So that's good. Uh, if you guys have any question or comments or or anything, just leave a comment and, and I will gladly answer my best opinion for you guys. Now, I'm just another guy on YouTube, so take my advice with a grain of salt. Always do your research, guys. You know, do your research, look around, buy your best um, option out there. You know, don't just buy one right away. Buy the cheapest one. Or, you know, don't buy the cheapest one. Buy a good quality, but find the lowest price for it, you know. You know, try not to change as much as you can. Keep it stable. I have not even bought a coral for two years now. I have been growing everything for two years. No fish for two years. So, everything, man. Living the dream. Living it simple. So... If you guys have any comments, just leave a comment. Uh, thanks for all, all the subscribers, likes, and comments. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. And adios.